So earlier today, Rockstar came out with new newswire talking about the quality of life updates for this upcoming DLC, that being the San Andreas Mercenaries DLC. A lot of other YouTubers already beat me to it. They already read the quality of life, you know, improvements or whatever to, to the game. I kind of wanted to like go over this multiple times, you know, really contemplate what's good about the quality of life update and what's bad about the quality of life update. Which brings me to this video, that being the good and the bad of the San Andreas Mercenary quality of life update i gotta work out that title but that's like the best i got right now <laughs> but yeah let's go ahead and just jump right into it so like i said this video is more or less for people who already read the newswire if you haven't read the newswire this video is not for you because this is gonna be a long video where i'm gonna get my thoughts about the quality of life what i think is gonna be good what i think is gonna be bad about it so like i said before if you haven't read the newswire go ahead and read it right now we'll come back to the video if you want to but yeah let's go ahead and like i said get started without further ado <laughs> All right, so there's more good than there is bad. So I want to start out with the good. So we already know there's the ability to claim all destroyed vehicles at once when filing a, a Moore's Mutual insurance claim. We already knew that was going to happen. We learned that earlier on in the week. Moore's Mutual will no longer charge for recovering personal vehicles, destroyed vehicles during contact missions. I can't really tell you the last time I've had my vehicle destroyed in a contact mission. And does that mean if I accidentally drive it into the ocean, I don't get charged for it? Or does that only apply if an NPC destroys my a personal vehicle? But that's still good, you know. You know, free is free, so I'm not complaining. And we already know about this one, custom description tags for garages to help you quickly locate your favorite rides when calling the mechanic which is good so if you have like a certain garage theme and you don't know what property it's under there you go right there the ability to select the individual floors when requesting vehicles from the eclipse boulevard garage for those of you that, that don't know the eclipse boulevard garage is a five-story 50 car garage this is good you know i guess but like i i i i, I could care less if we do have it because it's still all under one floor so you kind of have an idea what what cars are what in what floor anyways so you kind of have an idea so it, it kind of is pointless but you know for those of you who find benefit to this you know that that is good now this one is about the new fighter jet that's being added to the game so pressing right on the d-pad will engage stealth mode on the new f-160 raju plane raju hopefully i pronounced that right vertical takeoff and landing vtol will move to l3 or ls holding l3 or ls when flying when flying all vtol aircraft will switch into and out of VTOL mode. So it's good they changed the control layout for the VTOL vehicles. So that means that there is going to be stealth mode for this fighter jet, which is good because I remember stealth mode for even the Akula. It was really frustrating for me because to go into stealth mode, you have to press right on D-pad. And then if you want to drop bombs, you're going to have to hold right on D-pad. And that was really frustrating for me. It's like the switch in and out stealth mode to drop bombs. It, it, I would just be stuck in stealth mode and then I'll end up like getting shot down by another player because they see what I'm trying to do, you know? So it's kind of cool how, how they're kind of fixing that. Hopefully that applies to the Akula. Maybe I feel like I'm the only, only one that had that a problem with the Akula. So I feel kind of stupid if that's the case. But yeah, let's move on to the option to re-request an active mobile operations center. Avenger or Terabyte delivered closer to your location via the interaction menu. So this is good for like people who are too lazy to drive to their Terabyte. And a lot of missions do take you out of the city. For example, uh, diamond shopping, that's a, a client job where you uh, rob the jewelry store. It takes you out of the city. So maybe you want to like call your Terabyte back to you to start up another client job. So that's, that's cool, I guess. But I'm, I, I've just grown accustomed to just going back to the Terabyte or going back to the Avenger, the MLC or whatever, whenever I need it to, you know, I just kind of say, okay, I just always kind of thought to myself, okay, this area is now my base of operations. I'll go back over there if I need to, you know, but this is cool that they're doing that. They already had this feature with the Kasaka because if you have an active Kasaka, let's say the Kasaka is over by Palito Bay and you're over by the beach and Los Santos, you can just call it the call up the Kasaka and it'll spawn closer to you. So that's cool that they added that. Additional filters for race types when browsing the jobs menu. Now that actually helps a lot because there's like so many types of races. There's street races, there's rally races, there's stunt races. There's quite a few races, but those are the ones at the top of my head that I can think of. If, if you actually want to do a stunt race and you get stuck doing a street race or vice versa, you don't have to worry about that anymore because now they're all going to be filtered, which is good and actually cleans up the game quite a lot. So I actually do appreciate them doing that. The Willard Eudora and the Albany Classic Broadway will be eligible for taxi work when using the taxi liveries. We already knew about this. 
This was supposed to be added to the Drug Wars DLC, but unfortunately it wasn't for whatever reason. But honestly, taxi work in it of itself is a waste of time. First off, you can do it for free, so you don't even need to buy the $600,000 taxi. You can just drive to the, the uh, taxi building location or rather the casino and start it up there. And the game will give you a taxi to you to do the taxi missions. But these taxi missions are just so pointless and stupid. They only pay like $1,000. Just the idea of buying the Eudora or the Broadway for the pure fact that it has the taxi livery just so you can do the taxi missions, you're going to be very disappointed because these missions do not pay a lot. Like... You're better off robbing stores, honestly. You get more money robbing stores than you do with these taxi missions. So it is good that they added that at, at least, you know. But at, at the same time, I think it's really a waste of time. Me personally, I think it's quite stupid. But let's move on to the, the next thing on this list, that being a buy-all option when purchasing body armor at the ammunition. Rank requirements for body armor are also being removed. Now, that's actually good because you don't really buy a lot of body armor. I think you buy like 10, I think. The, the whole buy-all option, it doesn't really like... It's just cutting off like 5 seconds. You're saving yourself 5 seconds, which is okay, I guess. That's cool. It's convenient, you know? There should have never been a rank option or a rank lock, I mean. I'm sorry. There should have never been a rank a requirement to buy body armor because especially if you're like a low level and you're being attacked by these level 500 players you know you're gonna need to be like suited up you know you're gonna need some body armor you're, you're need you're gonna need to have some type of protection at least you know so the whole idea that oh you're getting attacked by a level 500 and you have no body armor oh you can't buy it anyways because it's rank locked you gotta be level 40 to get this body armor you know i just think that, that whole idea of having that rank locked is actually really stupid to me personally so i'm actually kind of glad they're removing that up next on the list is that body armor will be restocked after quick restarting a mission and matching the same body armor levels as the first entering the lobby so this would help a lot with heists, especially if you have the quick restart at heist. Uh, with the last summer's DLC, they made it to where it restocks all your snacks, but now I guess they're restocking body armor as well. And that does help a lot because especially if you're doing the aggressive approach for the casino heist, or if you're doing the doomsday heist, you go through a lot of armor and snacks quite fast. So when it quick restarts, it does help a lot with that they actually are restocking the body armor. So that's a, that's a big plus for this uh, quality of life update. Our right, up next is when equipping body armor via the weapon wheel, the types of armor used will relative to how much damage a player has taken. So that basically means if you lost like, let's say one third of your body armor, you don't just like throw the body armor you're wearing away and then have to put on a full uh, body armor. You can use like a smaller body armor, if that makes sense it's kind of hard to explain like you, you use a small body armor to patch up the rest of your body armor if that makes sense i'm not sure if i'm making a lot of sense here moving on to the next quality of life update that's positive is that when parachuting or in free fall players will no longer receive phone calls from tom connors or english dave that's good because i'd be more concerned about pulling the parachute so i don't die instead of answering the phone to do a random mission so that's always good up next is that the Madrazo Dispatch Services no longer require multiple players and can be taken on solo. So those of you who don't know, the Madrazo Dispatch Services, those are the Martin Madrazo contact missions that pay out about, I believe, fifteen dollars to $20,000. And you were only able to do these with another player. And these were actually one of the more fun missions. You, you can actually enter a lot of interiors. And these missions help, helped me out a lot when I was a low level and I needed money bad. I remember these were double money. I, I believe they're actually triple money at one point. But I remember when these are double money, these missions did help me out a lot to uh, raise up a lot of money. So I do recommend as a new player to do these missions. So yeah, it's actually really good that they're making it to where you can do these solo completely and not have to rely on other players. Up next is something we already know. But I'm going to go ahead and read it anyways. Alternative Sprint Control, which is hold the sprint in the settings. And again already went over this that's good we don't have to keep smashing the a button or the x button to keep running that's good up next is players will be able to select a name for their asset product via the interaction menu to receive a five percent sell bonus now not only are you getting a two percent sell bonus per player in the lobby if you sell your asset in the public lobby but now you're going to be getting a five percent bonus just for naming your asset i feel like there has to be a catch i there has to be a catch if you're if you're naming your asset just just for naming your acid you're getting a five percent sale bonus there has to be a catch like does that mean like for example you can't go ghost organization while on a sale mission you can't go off radar or out of sight like what, what, what there has to be some kind of catch it does 
there's no way they're just going to give you a free 5% bonus for completing the cell. Up next is rank requirements for daily challenges will be removed to allow more players to participate. Me personally, this is good. You know, I don't like uh, rank requirements in Grand Theft Auto Online, but I think it's quite stupid that daily objectives even are a thing because they're really tedious to do. And a lot of these you need to have another player with. Like, there's one daily objective you get sometimes where it's like, oh, you have to play tennis with another player. Nobody's going to accept the invite to tennis, you know? And the reward for doing these daily objectives, you do three of them every day. The reward is that you only get $30,000. I can make that in the span of two minutes doing a client job, you know? I think it's pretty stupid that daily objectives are even in the game in the first place, and they only pay out this $30,000. The daily objectives in Red Dead Online are actually quite better because you earn gold and you get a streak and all that good stuff. So I think daily objectives in Grand Theft Auto Online is just stupid and it's not needed. But again, removing rank locks is always good. Now next is that payouts on many collectibles and events such as buried stashes and treasure chests will be increased. And not only that, but Rockstar is also correcting payouts for Gerald's last play missions and a super yacht lifestyle uh, missions. They're increasing it up to 25%. So let me start by talking about the collectibles and the events and the treasure chests. That's good, especially if you're a new player and you can't afford to buy a business, you can't afford to buy, you can't afford to buy the auto shop or the Kasaka. This is good. And especially if they're increasing the payout for the Gerald last play missions, because the Gerald last play missions pay out about $20,000 and they're, they're one of the more easier missions to do solo. They're also quite fun. I can't stress enough how good this is for new players. And it gives older players like myself a more incentive to go back to these missions. So yeah, this is always good. More money is always, you know, good. <laughs> and now up next on the list, we already knew this is going to happen. They've been talking about this for the past month or two. Is that they're rebalancing weapons on the laser and the hydra in free mode only. So maybe in missions, or maybe in like contact missions, you'll still be able to use a laser and have like the splash damage explosive cannon. But there's no reason for the explosive cannon on the Hydra and the laser to be that overpowered. Not only is there explosive cannons on it, that's cool, you know, but there's a, there's splash damage. Splash damage being that not only the bullet from the explosive cannon will hit, each shot from the explosive cannon causes like a huge explosion around where it's shot at. And when the explosive cannon has rapid fire where it's automatic, it just causes a ridiculous amount of damage and it should have never been in the game in the first place. It should have been like how they're making it now where it's just, where basically they're, I assume, hopefully, they're taking away the splash damage from the explosive cannon. If not, I don't know how else they can nerf it. And last on the good list is that the orbital cannon can no longer be instantly reset or refunded to prevent players from being repeatedly targeted. So that's pretty self-explanatory. That means that people can't just be hiding in the facility after lo losing a fight against you and just spam the orbital cannon on you. Or just spam the orbital cannon on, on you for like no reason in general. That's, if, that's happened to a lot of players, honestly. And that's actually good. They're, they're uh, fixing that. And that should have been fixed like six years ago. And if I had it my way, the Orbital Cannon would not be in Graph Auto Online. It has no reason to be a GTA Online. It was only... The only good reason to use the Orbital Cannon was during the Doomsday Heist, the, the final mission where you're, you're destroying those vans. Other than that, there's no reason for this to be in the game. Honestly, like, Rockstar should just remove the Orbital Cannon and refund all the losers who spam it. Like, how much... $900,000, however much it costs to buy it to install in your facility. They should just remove it completely because unlike the oppressor, because the oppressor actually serves an advantage when it comes to grinding and some aspects of PvP, the orbital cannon serves no purpose. It serves absolutely no purpose to the game. It's just so that jackasses can just drop a million dollars every time, you know, kill you. And they abuse it by, you know, glitching or whatever. That's what they're going to fix. But me personally, like I said, remove it. There's no fucking reason for this to be in the game. All right, now going on to the bad. Now, this list is actually a lot shorter than the good, so let's go ahead and just run through these and get this out of the way. Lesser used vehicles will be removed from in-game websites to streamline the browsing experience. These vehicles will be made available via events, showrooms, the Lucky Wheel, and other places. Well, how does Rockstar know what vehicles players use? That's my question, and that's what I'm worried about. 
because there are some vehicles that I like that aren't as popular, like Penumbra FF, the 8F Drafter, or even some of the, the newer vehicles that aren't as popular that I like. Are, are they just going to take those away? Like, yeah, I already bought them. What if, what if I wanted to buy a second one, you know? It, that just kind of worries me. And what else are they going to do with this? Are they going to make these vehicles like GTA Plus exclusives? Or are they going to bring them back for event weeks? So people who are afraid of missing out, fear of missing out, FOMO. Are they going to just use that to their advantage so that people can drop like a shark, a shark card or a GTA Plus to get these vehicles? That's what I'm worried about and I really hope it's not the case because that's really stupid. I can say the very least it gives showrooms more of a purpose because there is no real purpose to go to the showrooms like Simeon's showrooms or the Luxury Auto showroom. I just think it's really stupid. And next on the list, which is actually last on the list, a new register as a boss option in the interaction menu. Merging Securo Serve and the Motorcycle Club. Now this could be very bad in a lot of different ways than just one. Because like, okay, what worries what worries me about this is that most players don't register as a Motorcycle Club unless they're doing MC sale missions, like you know selling their meth labs or their cocaine lockups or whatever. So, and the reason why they do this is because when they're registered as a motorcycle club, their businesses will get raided because they're registered as an MC. So that's why most people don't register as either or they register as, as Securo Serve, because Securo Serve is not connected to your MC businesses. So your MC businesses won't get raided as you're a CEO. So now that they're merging the two together, let's say you, you're just trying to like fill up your just say you're trying to fill up your CEO crate warehouse. While you're doing this, you're all the way in the city, and then your cocaine lockup in Sandy Shores is getting raided. That worries me, especially if you're in a public lobby. It's so stressful to do these uh, raid missions while in a public lobby. So the fact that they're merging these two together, it's just very worrisome, you know? If they wanted to do anything with CEO or the Motorcycle Club, they should have increased the amount of CEOs and Motorcycle Club members that can be available in the public lobbies instead of just limiting it to a certain amount of uh, CEOs. That's really stupid to have it that way. So that's that's actually really worrisome. Not only that, the MC businesses, the fees, because if, if you guys don't know, every in-game day, that being 48 minutes, you have to, you have a, uh, a fee, like your daily fees. And this means your, uh, your utility bills, you're paying your businesses, you're paying your employees, and also you're paying your MC businesses. But you only pay your MC business fees when you're registered as a motorcycle club. So the idea that when you're registered as a boss, you're paying all these fees, you're going to be paying about $30,000, which isn't a lot. But as a new player, that is a lot. $30,000 and you lose that every in-game day. A lot of new players don't have a Kasaka. A lot of new players just have the MC businesses and the terabyte. So the idea that they're losing thirty thousand dollars is just it's not a lot of money to like old players i know but to new players it's just so frustrating you know so hopefully rockstar will address this further hopefully it's not the case at all about about the whole boss option but that's one that really really worries me so yeah that's pretty much everything that's pretty much the good and the bad of the quality of life update that has been announced for the san andreas mercenaries of dlc that's coming out this tuesday so sorry if this video was really long. This wasn't meant to be like a recap of the Newswire like a lot of other YouTubers already did. This is more of my thoughts, you know, of what I think is good, what I think is bad, and my reasons for it. That's why it's been it, it's such a long video. And I'm, I'm sorry if you guys had to sit through this. It's a, it's a 25 minute video. I'm sorry. You know, but yeah, that's pretty much all I really got to say about this. If you guys did go on, enjoy the video, like it, comment, will be appreciated. Subscribe if you're new to the channel. And let me know down in the comment section below if you agree with me on this. Do you think that a lot of these uh, options, like for example, the boss option, you think that, that might be bad to the game? Do you think it's stupid they're removing uh, certain vehicles from websites? Let me know down in the comment section below. But yeah, with all that out of the way, I'll see you guys in the next video. Take care, everybody.